more than than one intelligent species in the universe. And religion has, in the past, assumed that humans are unique and divine and a special creation. So the kind of the first interpretation might be that discovering intelligent life somewhere else devalues us um, because it means that we lose something unique. This has been happening already in some sense because we've been losing things that make us unique all the time because we start to discover that animals have many of the traits that we used to consider uniquely human, um, language, tool use, empathy, grief. Um, these are all things that are now being discovered in various parts of the animal kingdom. So in a way, we've been kind of chipping away at our divinity over the last couple of hundred years. Um, and if we discover alien life, that might just be the last you know, chip off the block and the whole thing crashes. Some other communities, that's an open question. I'm not an expert on all the religions of the world, uh, and I'm... I guess that probably nobody is. Um, some are much more able to uh, absorb the idea of there being uh, other worlds. Take, for example, Catholicism. They've kind of worked this out at the Vatican level <laughs> in terms of, you know, they've got their own astrobiology program, and um, they have people who've kind of worked out the theology. Um, some other religions are probably not going to be able to absorb that idea quite so easily. So it's going to be uneven. That's Catherine Denning again. Some religions have deeply considered the prospect of discovering other intelligent life, but the general population might not have as much guidance on how to react to this discovery. But then also you have the problem of kind of the general population and the reality that everybody is simply going to be reacting to information rather than to, say, the actual presence of an alien in their living room. They're going to be reacting to what they read via Google News, via Facebook, or whatever it is, that whatever channels um, are their information channels. And that gives us a whole new category of problem because... One thing we know from prior um, episodes and study where it was thought that a detection had happened and very frequent um, little blips in the news where, say, NASA is going to have a press conference and everybody goes, ah, it's aliens, <laughs> and the flurry kind of spreads through, through all the news outlets of the world. And that information gets morphed in the public, uh, popular imagination. A lot of it is misinformation, so um, false reports of detections or overblown reports of anomalous signals, things like that. And people react to the misinformation, <laughs> of course. And in the event of a real detection, there would be as much misinformation spread as real information, and people will be reacting to that. And so I think this is all to say that we need to be thinking in much more diverse terms about what's really going on in the world today. It wouldn't be just one straightforward, clear channel of information that would then be filtered through everybody's local cleric um, and that the religious response would be mediated that way. It's going to be much more complicated. As much as we might turn to religion, perhaps we're not considering this question through the right lens. What we might really be talking about is redefining what it means to be human. Phil Searles, an anthropologist who has studied the culture of astronomy, talks to us about what another civilization might do to our humanity. Uh, in terms of the place of humanity in the world, maybe they, if they are inclined to um, seek certainty and, and comfort, in that, maybe they would go towards religion. And uh, you, know, you could even have religions you know, based on, on this, you know, kind of discovery. So yeah, I, so yeah, it's interesting because I, I think that across all the religions, I think that each, I think that every religion has diversity in terms of those more personal kinds of factors that would make somebody want to cling to science or numbers and another person might want to cling to um, something that's less objectifiable um, more um, relying more on faith or you know what they learn growing up or something like that so I think that it's something that would definitely create change within religious communities you know we literally have to potentially redefine the humanities and call it something else because we see people who aren't human, who are similar to us, um, doing things that we associate with just being human. So you could have some people use this as a way to uh, bring people together. Maybe, but it could also be even in opposition to 
there could be this insecurity among some people. People always like to feel superior. Well, not always, but some people like to feel superior. So you have uh, people constantly comparing themselves to this alien civilization, and maybe that would, you know, it could it could it could spark a a human pride <laughs> movement, which would be kind of uh, you know bring humanity together, but against this alien species, which would be really <laughs> kind of an interesting double-edged sword yeah. where it's maybe it's Homo based on first. it's yeah <laughs> yeah so it's based on human homo sapien pride uh, in opposition to this other species as we think about who we might be or become here on earth joel myers also questioned how would we then communicate our spirituality to our new neighbors how do we represent our deeply held beliefs and who might be selected to communicate them whether I like it or not, I mean, my own personal beliefs aside, uh, religion is deeply woven into the fabric of our culture, much the same way that scientific thought is deeply woven into the fabric of our culture. Uh, so it's certainly something that can't, that can't be ignored. But we certainly also don't want to proselytize when we, when we meet this other civilization. We don't want to try to convert them to our religion. Um, so uh, it certainly holds an important place in understanding humanity. Uh, and so in that sense, it can can't be ignored. But I would view it as, as an academic question that we should try to inform them about the existence of religion, how it has played a role in the history uh, and, and building of our society, but that we should not try to we should not try to answer the question for them about the veracity of the facts that are claimed as a makeup of the religion. If you were to put uh, religious representatives, which religion would you choose? And if the answer is you choose every religion, then how can we be taken seriously when these things are mutually exclusive? Uh, they claim to have mutually exclusive um, patents on the truth. And that is, that is not a good situation to, that's not a, first, a good first foot forward for our civilization to communicate with this other civilization. And so that doesn't mean that we should stamp out religion, but I don't think they would be a good first envoy to send uh, in this regard. We're often advised not to discuss religion at the dinner table, but when faced with someone who has no context for our systems of religious or human philosophy, how do we create an understanding when we one day break bread together? American author Annie Dillard offered this example. An Eskimo asked a priest, if I did not know about God and sin, would I go to hell? To which the priest replied, no, not if you did not know. The Eskimo then asked, then why did you tell me? Thanks for joining us for this episode of Transmission Podcast. This has been Transmission Podcast, hosted by Cecilia Lynn Jacobs and produced by Ian Garrett and Kate Ladenheim, with special thanks to today's guests, Christine Corbett-Moran, Pippa Goldschmitz, Dr. Duncan Forgan, Seth Shastek, Phil Thrills, Catherine Denning, Pete Warden, Joel Myers. Original composition and sound editing by Miles Avery. Transmission is a podcast and performance series speculating on what might happen if we began to receive the popular broadcasts of intelligent alien life and follows two sisters selected to lead an interstellar mission to make first contact. Learn more about our team and upcoming performances at luxeterra.com and find us on Facebook and Twitter at Luxeterra. That's L U X T A T E R R A. Transmission is a production of Toaster Lab in Canada and is a fiscally sponsored project of Fractured Atlas in the United States. Thank you.